Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan, coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. A fuel depot exploded on Monday night, killing at least 68 refugees and injuring hundreds as thousands of ethnic Armenians fled the Nagorno-Karabakh region following a violent military takeover by Azerbaijan. In a Facebook statement, representatives for Nagorno-Karabakh's people confirmed the deaths, while adding that the whereabouts of 105 refugees from that region are still unknown. The explosion happened off a highway away from Stepanakert, where tens of thousands of ethnic Armenians have fled to Armenia. It's estimated that nearly 3,000 ethnic Armenians have fled the enclave. The disputed region is recognised internationally as part of Azerbaijan, but has been controlled by ethnic Armenians for three decades. Pope Francis has revealed the name of his next apostolic exhortation on the environment as Laudati Deum, meaning Praise the Lord. It will be published on the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi on the 4th of October. The Pope has referred to the new document as a follow-up to his 2015 encyclical Laudato Si on care for our common home. The Holy Father said, The new document is a look at what has happened since 2015 and what more needs to be done. He also said humanity is tired of the misuse of nature and stressed the need to return to the path of good use of nature. Twelve students from South Asia took part in an online encounter with Pope Francis. The students from India, Pakistan and Nepal's local Catholic universities took part in the Building Bridges in South Asia Meet, organised by Loyola University Chicago and the Pontifical Commission for Latin America. Several topics were discussed, including the difficulty of living the Christian faith in a hostile context and the polarisation in society. For an hour and a half, the pontiff answered the questions of students. During the third segment, three young women spoke about the difficulty of living their Christian faith in the context of oppression and persecution. Pope Francis said he was moved by their testimonies and exhorted the students to have dreams and not to stop extending their hands to others. With the exceptions of Russia and China, all members of the United Nations Security Council issued a condemnation of the Taliban's persecution of women in Afghanistan. The resolution on Tuesday sought all member countries to take urgent steps to hold the Taliban responsible for atrocities against women. The UN Secretary General's Special Representative for Afghanistan, Rosa Otunbayeva, said that after coming to power in 2021, the Taliban have issued more than 50 decrees to eradicate women from the public sphere. These include the closure of secondary education for girls and preventing women from seeking admission to universities. Women are also prohibited from joining entertainment and sports facilities. A series of billboards along a major interstate highway linking states with abortion curves to states that have easier access to the procedure has invited the ire of abortion survivors. Pro-abortion group Shout Your Abortion placed a series of billboards along Interstate 55, stretching from Louisiana to Illinois. Abortion survivors Lauren Adena and Jennifer Milborn told Fox News that the group was distorting the message of what God's plan really is, calling the group anti-life. In the United States, a German family residing there for more than 10 years have been told to return to Germany next month. Ufa and Hannelore Romeike and their then five children fled Germany in 2009 to escape from compulsory education laws that prohibit homeschooling. Initially, they sought asylum from the federal government, claiming that they faced religious persecution in Germany. During the administration of Barack Obama, the family was granted indefinite deferred action status and they were able to reside in the United States for more than a decade. It was during a recent routine check-in with immigration officers that the family was told to secure their passports and return to their home country within four weeks. This was announced by the Home School Legal Defence Association. The President of the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops has highlighted the significant developments in the long journey towards healing and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Addressing the opening of the annual plenary assembly of the Canadian Catholic Bishops Conference in King City, Ontario, Bishop Raymond Poisson said the key word in this journey was accompaniment. Bishop Poisson said Pope Francis's penitential pilgrimage to Canada in July in 2022 and his heartfelt apologies to Indigenous peoples marked a significant milestone. This inspired the bishops to take new steps in their individual and collective pastoral engagements with Indigenous peoples. The conflict hit Tigray region in Ethiopia is now witnessing deaths due to hunger. According to researchers, over 1,300 deaths by starvation were reported in the northern region since a truce brought an end to a two-year conflict. Michaela University and local health authorities undertook a study in the regional capital 
and discovered that hunger was the main cause of death in the region. The study made use of a household census conducted from August the 15th to the 29th in nine sub-districts and 53 camps for internally displaced people. Authorities are pointing out the suspension of food aid by the United States and the United Nations as an underlying reason for the deaths. While the Ethiopian government wants the suspension to end, the United States and the UN want the federal government to give up its control of the food distribution system. The Isle of Man, located between Ireland and Great Britain, will get a Catholic cathedral for the first time in the history of the predominantly Anglican island. The Church of St Mary of the Isle in the city of Douglas has been awarded cathedral status by Pope Francis. It will serve as a co-cathedral for the Archdiocese of Liverpool, alongside the Metropolitan Cathedral of Christ the King. The two cathedrals are 80 miles apart and are separated by the Irish Sea. Archbishop Malcolm McMahon of Liverpool said it is with great joy that St Mary of the Isle has been granted cathedral status. The former publisher of Hong Kong's Apple Daily newspaper and pro-democracy Catholic activist Jimmy Lai spent his 1,000th day behind bars on Tuesday, awaiting his long-delayed trial. Lai's son has expressed fear that his father could die in prison, and human rights groups have urged the UK government to take immediate action to free the 75-year-old British citizen. Lai was arrested in December in 2020 under Hong Kong's national security law. He could face life in prison if convicted. His trial is set for the 18th of December, nearly one year after it was originally scheduled. Lai is one among 250 pro-democracy activists who have been arrested under the national security law since it was imposed by Beijing. The law was implemented in response to Hong Kong's massive pro-democracy protests in which nearly 2 million people took to the streets in 2019. A senior Vatican official has told the United Nations General Assembly that the international community must maintain the universality of global multilateral forums and not turn them into clubs reserved for a few elites. The Vatican Secretary for Relations with States, Archbishop Paul Richard Gallagher, argued for a return to listening and dialogue to solve conflicts and lessen the suffering of humanity. The Archbishop also drew attention to the fact that this year marks the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the 30th anniversary of the Vienna Declaration and Programme of Action. He said the significant anniversaries of these documents invite an in-depth reflection on human rights to renew commitments in favour of the defence of human dignity. He emphasised that religious freedom is one of the absolute minimum requirements necessary to live in dignity. A United Nations expert has urged the Algerian government to pay attention to the legal curbs and prosecution of people and associations in the North African country. Special Rapporteur on the Right to Assembly, Clement Voul, said in a recent statement that the government must loosen curbs on assemblies and associations to bring laws and practice into conformity with the constitution and international law. He issued the statement after his 10-day visit to the country came to an end. Vul visited Algeria at a time when it is weighing the ongoing reforms to bring legislation into line with the 2020 constitution and the aspirations of the so-called Iraq demonstrators. The demonstrations witnessed thousands of people taking to the streets between 2019 and 2020. The movement was formed in response to President Abdelaziz Bouteflika announcing his wish to run for a fifth term in office. Iraq demonstrators are also seeking political and economic reforms and the removal of long-standing political elites. Global Catholic Charity Aid to the Church in Need is providing emergency support to the victims of anti-Christian violence in Jaranwala in Pakistan. The Diocese of Faisalabad said the anti-Christian riots broke out on August the 16th after rumours spread that a man and his son disrespected the Quran. Irate mobs then went on a rampage damaging churches and Christian homes and establishments. The diocese has identified as many as 464 affected families who are in desperate need. The affected families are being provided with clothes, kitchen appliances, bedding and mattresses, as well as stationary items for school children and motorcycles for drivers and delivery boys. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again next time for more. And do remember in the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.